One of the number one things that we get asked on our channel is how to make new things look old. It's what we specialize in. I mean, we're making new things look old again, right? So today's video, we are working on the Deborah coffee table. We have a couple of full length DIYs on it. We're gonna post those below, but we're just gonna give you the nitty gritty on how to take new lumber and make it look aged and chippy and salvage. I've got these scallops cut out out of one by six and they've got real sharp, crisp edges where I just cut them. To make it look old, we're gonna round the edges off to give them kind of a time-worn appearance and it'll help it look a lot older without doing much work. Okay, compare sanded board with crisp, clean cut edge board. And now for the really fun part, we take a hammer to the top and just give it kind of a little character. It's not gonna show up a ton, but when we paint it and sand it, it'll catch the shadows in the little divots that we make and really be visible. And I'm not hitting it hard, I'm just kind of twisting it around. Because I don't want it to look like I took a hammer and whacked it. Lucky for me, the weather is good. We've got our spray paint in satin and I've got a mask. I'm gonna give a quick coat of spray paint to this wood and before it's all the way dry, we'll start applying the milk paint. We've got spray paint in dark walnut satin. It's a quick little hack way to get it dark, give a little resist and make it ready for milk paint. It doesn't matter how neat of a spray paint job you do, they just need to be mostly covered because we're trying to make it look old. All right, so we're mixing up a lot of flour sack. This is Sweet Pickens milk paint in flour sack. And I used a whole cup of that with our handy dandy hobnail measure. One part water, one part powder, and then we're gonna mix it up with the immersion blender. We want it to chip as much as we can, so we're not doing any extra bond in this. So the way we do it is we kind of line things up and then we figure out which boards we're gonna paint what colors. I'm not worried about full coverage because we're wanting to make it chippy. I'm putting on this paint nice and thick, not perfect, wanting it to look old and salvaged. And I'm also making sure to go a little bit over all the edges because when you round the edges, this top will not be completely flat. So you kind of see down into the cracks and you don't want them to see unfinished or spray painted wood. So just make sure you get all those edges done when you're doing a build like this. All right, Jamie's finishing up painting that last board and I'm gonna go ahead and force some crackle with the heat gun. It'll probably crackle and chip naturally, but we wanna force the issue. I glued and clamped the legs together last night. This is just three two by sixes cut down to four and a half inches wide. And this is what I'm gonna turn the legs out of. All right, we are starting to get some chipping, some good texture, some crackling. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some 220 grit, see what comes off, see what's loose. Got a little bit of texture here and there, which is great. It's gonna add to the look. 
And then I'm gonna paint the legs that I just made. And we will get the rest of this distressed and start assembling it. So the reason we haven't attached these yet and we're sanding them all individually is because we want the distressing to go down on the ends so that it looks like these were all individual boards painted separately, which they actually were. So it looks like these boards all came from different walks of life, different places, different pieces of furniture or buildings or whatever. And that's, and we're getting close. I think we're going to achieve that with this piece. One of the things I love about distressing is you can start to see all of the wood grain and things. It really brings out the character that's in the wood. All right, so I'm just painting these legs here. Zeb did a really good job painting these. Good job, Zeb. Oh, thank you. How long did it take you to do these? It took me about 15 minutes a leg, so an hour. That's not bad. And we don't mind, like you can kind of see there's a little crack there. We leave that because it looks like salvage. If you wanted it to be perfect, you could seal it, but definitely not the look we're going for. So when I used to make table legs and someone didn't want to see all of the cracks and the imperfections in the wood, I would, I would fill those cracks with Bondo and then we'd paint over. the inside of these legs before we attach them that way we make sure we get them all the way done and then we will put them on and seal the entire piece says you can't make new wood look old again. Not me. You know what, the awesome part about this is every time we make one of these coffee tables, it turns out just a little bit different because milk paint is completely unpredictable. But with a little bit of effort, you can make brand new Home Depot wood look like it came out of the salvage bin. Which the salvage bin is what we're going for in almost all of our builds. So if you could make any wood you wanted to get super chippy, what would you build with it? Comment below and let us know what you would like to build with some chippy paint. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and product needs. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY and chippy paint. <laughs>